Black Manta, Aquaman's most iconic foe, pirate, mercenary, supervillain. What's going on, people? My name is Yaya Abdul Mateen II, and it's been my pleasure to bring Black Manta to life in James Wan's Aquaman. When I was casting this role, I started to research everything there was to know about this character. What is he like in the comics? And why is Black Manta so obsessed with Aquaman's destruction? Turns out, Black Manta is a lot more than just a big, scary helmet. Black Manta made his debut in 1967 in Aquaman number 35. In his early appearances, Black Manta and his minions were merely obsessed with conquering Atlantis. But in the late 70s, Manta's rivalry with Aquaman took a deadly turn. In a bid to create an underwater homeland for his people, appointing himself as their tyrannical leader, Black Manta caused the death of Arthur and Mera's only son. This blood feud has fueled their mutual hostility ever since. In the 1990s, a new origin for Manta was revealed, where he was kidnapped as a child and resented Aquaman for not coming to his rescue. Jeff Johns ultimately revitalized the character in DC's New 52 relaunch, focusing again on Arthur and Black Manta's deadly familial vendettas. In James Wan's Aquaman, we see a fresh interpretation of Black Manta that combines his various comic book incarnations with a unique new design for the DC on-screen universe. If there's one characteristic of Black Manta that has been integral to every depiction of him, it's his control of powerful technology. Even though he is a mere mortal beneath all that armor, his sophisticated weapons and vehicles effectively level the playing field. The Manta Sub. It is high speed, stealth equipped, armed for any type of battle that you can imagine. It's got cutting edge stealth armor to avoid sonar arrays, silent turbine engines, a not so silent Gatling gun. What Manta is really known for is his armored suit and his arsenal. In the film, even before he leveled up to a full fledged supervillain, he still had a pretty impressive set of toys, like this specifically designed rebreather helmet that helps Manta and his henchmen transition between different pressurized environments with ease. A bracer. David flicks his wrist and a long blade shoots out, which brings me to this cool prop from the film, Black Manta's grandfather's knife. It's heavy, it's a real knife, it'll cut you. And it has the silhouette of a manta ray just right here. It's obviously very inspiring for David Kane. Now, these tools and weapons may be devastating against the average submariner, but they are the weapons of mortal men, so they only work against more men. <clears throat> Made from the deconstructed Atlantean technology supplied by King Orm, he's able to transform himself into a formidable adversary for Aquaman. By the time Manta faces off with Aquaman for the second time, he's upgraded his artillery just a little bit. Most importantly is now his knives are made out of Atlantean steel, which is lightweight, aerodynamic, and has the ability to penetrate Aquaman's skin. This gauntlet it fits onto the arm, and with a simple flick, it shoots out. And now he can move his arm faster and be even more deadly. So now, Manta also sports another gauntlet that has an electrified harpoon cable. Now, this high-velocity harpoon sends a powerful electric current into Aquaman or any other enemy silly enough to get in his way. This bad boy that we're looking at right here is Black Manta's hydroplasma rifle. It is badass. I mean, it's about 40 pounds, but once you have to pick it up 10 to 20 times for takes, it starts to feel like it's 100 pounds, right? It converts water into a plasma rays, and when you pull it, it makes a lot of noise and causes a whole lot of destruction. Black Manta, being the genius that he is, converts it into technology for his own Manta suit. One of the really cool features that you'll notice if you look at the movie, there was a red light originally at the top of his gun. It becomes part of his spine 
on the Manta costume. And when it's all the way lit, that's an indication that you should get out of the way. Now, the first thing that comes to mind when people think of Black Manta is often his huge helmet with the big red eyes. And behind those eyes is a built-in heads-up display with vital information about his environment and his enemies. Black Manta has equipped his suit with these really cool jetpacks. This jetpack rests on Black Manta's shoulders, which gives him extraordinary maneuverability. If we look at this boot, he has a jetpack coming out the back of his calf, which means that he can now jump extremely high into the air. He can swim really fast, and this paired with this makes him a very powerful mover above ground. Now, all of this high-tech wizardry looks really effortless in the film, but it takes a lot of off-screen work to make the on-screen Manta as awesome as he is. In real life, the suit is not powered by some futuristic saltwater engine. It works on the fantastic effort of the crew and the designers who helped to make this film look great. So thank you to you all for helping me to look as badass as I did in the movie. It's been an amazing adventure bringing Black Man to the life. And you know we haven't seen the last of him on the film. So stick around and we'll get to see who's the real key of the seven seas. Spoiler alert, it's this guy, or that guy. How big is that guy? Peace.